Good morning, guys. It's a cold and blustery uh, late October morning, and that doesn't quite sound right. Late October is getting towards late spring. It's supposed to be quite warm. It has been. Today it's cold. I've actually lit the shed fire. Today we're going to continue our quest to empty the emergency storage shed, which I'm just entering now. And if I spin the camera around, you'll see behind me there's a wall of goodies, goodies, junk, um, interchangeable words this is part 38 did i mention that already i'm not sure we're going to continue delving into this shed to clean it out let's see what we can find today and now view from the door we need to try and get to the back wall of this shed which is around about 20 odd feet further along when i filled it i we had shelves along each wall and then rather than leaving a walkway because we didn't have the luxury of space we just continued to fill the middle like you would play Tetris and not leave a single gap. Now, for those who have just joined my channel, all of this came from my old shop where I had to leave quickly. It's a culmination of 20 years of secondhand dealing and cleaning out people's sheds and stashing good and interesting stuff aside. And would you believe some boxes? I've probably never ever looked in because sometimes we clean out someone's shed and we're under pressure to empty it and the boxes get moved without so much as a peek. And uh, yeah, it's a bit of a mystery. It's a bit of a mixed bag, treasures, junk, uh, all sorts. So we've been working on cleaning out this heavy grey cabinet because I'm going to use this and the top part I've repacked with stuff from recent deals that I've got to sort through a bit further and it's all been labelled. It gives me a spot to organise things as I'm unpacking boxes. I've also found some tools and things that uh, I'm going to keep once this room is empty it's going to be a functional workshop along with the other part of my shed and things like drill bits and that I'm, I'm keeping these out of a recent deal until I can finish emptying all those boxes and then sort out what I'm going to keep and what I'm going to sell I've also added some new old stock electronics parts that I found in a box just the other day I'm not even sure what they are but as I find more I'll keep them together we'll go through those once that deal is complete Back to the job at hand, we only have the bottom two compartments to go on this cabinet and then we'll delve deeper. In fact, I think we'll do this one next and there's some really unusual combinations. In fact, that looks like a bottle of champagne. Early camera, door hardware, there's antique bottles in that one. I'm getting distracted. Let's get back to these two. Looks like an electric motor. And a timber box full of possibly old fuses. I think I put them aside to work out if they were going to be much scrap value or whether I can sell them. Let's take those through to the bench and work out what to do with them. Now this is one beefy electric motor. I'm not sure if it's a goer or not, so we'll check that out shortly. Let's go and get that other box. And for those of you who are new to the channel, um, this is a kind of a typical format. We show you where we're up to in the shed. Um, you see me bring things back to the bench, we'll go through them, we'll sort out. Uh, sometimes we scrap stuff and weigh up the scrap and see what price we get. Other times we test things and if it's good enough and needs a bit of fixing, we do that and then we sell it. So I work at a price. Sometimes I decide I want to keep things. So in the end, we usually have a notepad, tally up what we can get for it. I sell it through my second hand shop and uh, we're up to about $6,600 out of that first part of that shed that I have been, it's been over this bench here, I've either fixed or cleaned up or tested or whatever, priced it and sold it through my shop. So it's not a shed full of junk. And I had someone say, just get a skip in, clean it all up, start with a fresh workshop, life's too short. Well, you know, I don't want to miss out on the process of cleaning it up and I want to keep stuff out of landfill. So life is short, you've got to fill it with things you enjoy doing. Let's have a look at this and work out what we're going to do with this stuff. Okay, let's have a look at these beauties. Now this motor, as I said, is beefy. It's quite heavy. I've just weighed it just for interest's sake. And if we send it off for scrap, it weighs 21.3 kilos. Uh, cast iron base, guaranteed to be copper inside. It was probably made around about 1950 or something. So that's about $25 Australian for scrap, just for that motor. But I'm not going to scrap it. I don't have an immediate use for it. Uh, and I can't really sell it through the shop i probably could but the cord has been chopped off it uh, I, it doesn't usually mean they've got a problem 
Uh, in fact, that cord doesn't look 1950s. I think it has been rewired at one stage. Maybe the cord was damaged. Very easy to damage cords on these motors because it only has to just get under the edge of the plate when you're moving it around and it almost guillotines it because you've got 20 odd kilos here. So I think uh, I'm probably going to hang on to it. Now I know that's not really cleaning out my shed, but it may be very handy for a project that I have in mind down the track. It's a really good solid motor. It actually spins over beautifully. It's got lots of momentum once you get it going. Uh, it looks like it's got old oil bearings, but that will be fine. It's got a nice keyway in the shaft there and a flat to put a, a set screw onto. Be great for putting a pulley and running something off. I have a part of an old wood uh, wood lathe that I may fix up one day. This would be an ideal motor for that. Now it's made in the States. Uh, there's a nice plaque on the back here and I'll get you a close-up of this. Without reflection, we can see it's made by Icor or Acor in uh, Chicago, Illinois. It's a half horsepower motor, 1425 RPM. So all the details are on there. I think it would be set up for 240 volts. Where is it? I can't quite. Oh, yeah, two, 115 to 250, is it? It's a bit hard to read that. Uh, so you obviously can wire it for either voltage it looks like the kind of motor, I'm not sure, it says one amp, but it looks like the kind of motor that would dim the lights in the whole neighbourhood when you first turn it on. But these things were beautiful old motors. So I'm going to keep that because it may have a use. I might sort of restore it a little bit down the track. I'd probably keep the original paintwork and just make sure it's electrically safe and clean it up and relube the bearings. But that'll be down the track. It's um, I looked up the company history, actually, of Icor or Acor. I'm going to call it ACOR because when you say eight, it's E I G H T. So E I might be, yeah, that's how I'm working my pronunciation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, they started making things around World War II era uh, DC motors, AC motors. They also made uh, quality reel to reel tape players, hi fi reel to reel players at one stage. Um, this was probably made in the 1950s. By 1960, I think they dropped the name and the company had been through numerous mergers, as happens. I have no idea who owns it now, but this would date to the 50s and it would be a beautiful piece to go on a vintage wood lathe. So I'll keep it for now. Now that brings us to this box of old fuses. Uh, Federal fuse, they're a ceramic um, body and they've got a wire going from either terminal. They're obviously high amperage. Look at the size of the terminals. Uh, so they've got a fuse element inside the ceramic. And I think it's surrounded by like a sand or some sort of inert powder. Uh, so that if it blows the fuse, it doesn't you know, catch fire to anything. Uh, lots of different sizes here. These big ones are certainly high current. I'll see if I can see an amperage rating on it. Uh, what does this one say? 440 volt. Made in England, that one. That's this one might be easier to read. So they're HRC fuse links. I'm not sure what HRC stands for. 550 volts AC. Not sure on an amperage. Anyway, regardless of that, they're very heavy duty. They've got a fair bit of weight to them. Obviously, some of the weight's going to be ceramic material and the sand inside. But the ends of these, I think, are are tinned copper. They're certainly not magnetic. They may be brass. Let's run a file across them. Very soft. It's a bit hard to tell. I think that one's actually brass. And that end terminal is copper. So you may not be able to see that very well, but it is copper. It's a pinkish look on that one. It depends on the reflection of light you're getting. And that appears to be a brass and you can see the end is actually riveted on so we have some copper number two copper and we have a brass cap on each end of that this one's slightly different that has much bigger ends in fact that's even screwed on uh, let's check that one non-magnetic even the screws are non-magnetic so we'll file across this end of it and that's copper nice and soft and the cap, that's definitely copper as well. So we're going to have a fair bit of copper out of some of them. It looks like some of them may be brass. 
Let's try this one. Now that's copper. So maybe the first one was the odd one out. Definitely copper. So that's going to add up to quite a bit of copper. So I think what we're going to have to decide is, I, I don't think these are worth selling. I can't guarantee that they're even blown. I could certainly test them all with a meter. I don't know how much of a market these old ones would have. I'll have to check eBay to see if any of these do actually sell secondhand. 16 amp on that one. 63. So yeah, they're certainly high current fuses. And there's some pretty big ones in here. Uh... I reckon it's probably worth scrapping these. We'll get a fair bit of copper out of it, but then we need to know how easy it is to scrap them. So we might do a bit of a trial on a few and see if it's worth our while. I'll quickly check eBay to see if I reckon I can sell them complete. Okay, I just did a bit of a check on eBay. They don't seem to sell very well at all. There's lots of new ones on there, but secondhand ones I saw people trying to sell groups of them and weren't even getting a $10 bid. Uh, all different sizes, and they looked a lot nicer than these. These are very secondhand. So even if they work, and I'm just going to check that because I want to see if they're good or not. I mean, who would keep blown fuses, really? Um, but you never know. Okay. That one appears to be blown. I can't get a reading on it. Let's go to the diode check. Beeper. Oh yeah, it's probably just oxidised so much on the... No, it's not going to work now. There you go. What about this one? Yeah, so they're okay, but just goes to show they wouldn't be very good to sell secondhand because they would... The terminals would need cleaning up and they don't seem to bring much anyway. So that's um, decided it for me. We're going to scrap them. We'll see if it's worth scrapping them for the copper. Uh, I checked, and HRC stands for High Rupturing Capacity. So they're designed to go into industrial situations where uh, there might be a massive overload of current and they will blow like a fuse does, but they will not explode. They've got really solid construction. They've got uh, fine sand or silica uh, or quartz, I think, inside to absorb some of the... Uh, some of the heat and everything so they're designed not to explode um so yeah more industrial situations let's see which ones are worth it so i'll maybe divide some into big, the groups obviously the larger ones are going to be uh yield more copper and brass or mainly copper hopefully and we'll have a look inside and see what they actually look like so i'll sort them into sizes maybe we'll do a quick time trial and see if we can get much copper out of it let's try this one definitely copper definitely copper maybe the first one i just didn't didn't file it deep enough all right i don't think the little ones are really going to be worth doing of course it depends how easy they are to get apart we don't want to make too much of a mess and we don't want to spend too much time okay let's get into this experiment i have my tools of choice a good size knockometer and a piece of railway track and i've checked there's no trains coming let's start with the big ones i'll try one of these i've got 10 here uh, I'll do one on camera perhaps and then I'll see how long it takes me to do the 10 or maybe I might just do five. We'll see how they're going. If they're too drawn out, we might um, short circuit the experiment. But if they work well and they're um, viable to scrap, uh, worthwhile, then I might skip the middle ones and do the, the smaller ones. I've also got some of these that don't have the tabs on the end, so I might try one of those to see if there's anything different involved there. They may have different... Um, fuse elements inside as well but i think they're all going to be uh filled with a silica type material and we'll have to be careful of the dust you don't want to breathe that stuff in so a mask is required uh, some of them i'm not sure on these yeah they might be all ceramic some of them i believe can be fiberglass which aren't going to break so that could be a problem but i think these ones are all ceramic and they should break up pretty easily with the aforementioned weapon all right um, I'll move the camera down. Hopefully the table doesn't vibrate and we'll have a look at doing this one first. I'll just check with the file again, but I think these are pretty much all copper. Yep, copper. Uh, I did find one a different sort that actually was definitely brass on the cap and copper on the end. So we'll leave that one aside. I've only got one of those. All right, now 
without making too much of a mess, I think we should be able to break the ceramic um, glasses, of course, uh, safety glasses are important. Uh, and we should be able to hit around the edge of it to clean the uh, the ceramic material from out of the cap pretty easily. So hopefully it doesn't take long to do. I guess I better take note of the time. Oh, there we go, it cracked easily and here comes the sand. I don't think it makes a lot of dust. It would be really good if you were making uh, hourglasses or something. It's perfect sand for that. All right, we can see the elements. This one looks like they're copper. Uh, that's the fusible links that actually uh, melt when it's overcurrent. So, all right, we'll keep doing this. We won't muck around talking too much or we won't get a good time trial in. So the ceramic's easy to break through. The sand doesn't make too much mess. I think we can jar it like this. A little bit flying around. Yeah, well that's pretty easy. That empties, empties all the ceramic material from out of the cap. So we've actually got, let's just snip these out of here. I mean, they're copper anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. But if we pull those off there, there's a nice solid lump of copper, and that's got a bit of weight to it. So let's clean up the other end the same. All right, that was pretty easy. There are a few bits flying around the shed. Uh, I guess you could do it with a towel over the top if you didn't want stuff going everywhere. But if you hit in a controlled manner, it's not too bad. Probably don't even have to pull these out because they look to be all copper except for maybe a little silver piece in the middle, maybe. It's possibly silver. I did read that some of these fusible links are pure silver. This one's certainly not. It's just copper. I'd say it's probably a little silver button in the middle. Uh, but that's not worth salvaging. If we get any with pure silver in, we'll weigh them up. So they can go into the caps. So that one's done. Okay, I've just swept up and sorry about the audio there. The vibrations from hammering knocked the microphone out of my phone. So the audio went a bit, it just went back through the phone microphone, which isn't the best quality. Uh, I have swept up. I'll do the other nine. I'll keep an eye on the time and we'll work out an approximate time then for maybe how many we can do in an hour. And then we can weigh up the copper and just see how viable it really is. Okay, just swept up our dust and rubble, and I've got to say, it does throw little bits all around the shed. Uh, it was perfectly safe from where I was standing because I was behind it, but uh, yeah, it might be worth setting up a curtain if you've got a lot of these to do. It'll help with your cleanup. Okay, now what did we find? Well, the first few had copper filaments inside, but most of them had what I'm pretty sure is pure silver. It certainly looks silver, and I did some reading and they do apparently use pure silver because of its melting temperature. They're very thin, but it's certainly worth saving. So I'll check out how long those 10 took me or nine, but we'll work it out, um, say for 10. We'll, we'll calculate it back to how many we could do in an hour. Uh, mind you, an hour of swinging the hammer like that would probably get pretty achy on the wrist, but it could add up to a fair bit of money. So. What I'm going to do next, though, is pull out these silver terminals. Now, we don't need to take the end part off. It's riveted, but it's they're both copper. So um, it will still go in the number two copper. So these, I think, are either soldered or something. I think they're under a little flange, but we're not going to try and take that apart. But I will break the uh, the filaments off. As close as I can. Yeah, they're tearing off right at the base. 
and they are very thin but we'll gather them all together and we'll weigh them up and we'll work out the price of scrap silver but uh, they certainly look silver to me okay we have a bit of a twist um, some of these that I were thought were copper solid copper they're certainly copper on the outside but they have a sleeve on the inside that is actually brass I think it'll come out really easily I'll just put it in a vice hit a screwdriver down there or a small chisel and it should fold it in and drop it out it's a bit of extra work though these other ones appear to be a brass outer as well so to do separate that I'll have to just again probably a screwdriver or a small chisel or something will just pop those rivets off so we'll have a copper bracket and then the brass collar so a little bit more work I'll do this now I'll just do it in the vise I won't film it because it's a bit hard to get the camera over there but it won't take much to separate them because both brass and copper are pretty soft so uh, and it looks like that cup's just pressed in there but I'll keep track of my time we'll add the time to this trial and uh, in the meantime Feast your eyes on our nice pile of silver. It doesn't weigh a lot. It's more like silver foil, as in not aluminium foil, silver. But it should weigh a little bit. Well, it'll add to our total, that's for sure. All done. That added 10 minutes. I timed it pretty well exactly. It was about three minutes, three and a half minutes to do those. And that was really easy. Just hammered a screwdriver down the side and it just popped straight out. So now we have copper. And now we have brass, even though it looks the same because it's all plated. And this side, they took a little longer. It was about six and a half minutes. So it did make pretty well exactly 10. But as you can see, I just jammed a screwdriver down on the top. And the brackets, the solder let go pretty easily. And they were riveted as well. But it didn't take much with a screwdriver and add in the outside vise. So I did it. So I'll just segregate them now into their proper metals. I won't worry about the little bits of copper here on a brass piece um, because you know, copper can go with brass anyway and it's not heavy enough to bother trying to snip that off. So, uh, all right, I'll sort it out, weigh it up, work out my times and I'll be back to you shortly. So I've weighed up the copper, I've weighed up the brass and I have weighed up the silver. Quick, off to the notepad. I've done some calculations and... Our brass was 0.6 of a kilo, about oh, $4.70 nearly. The copper was about $7.35. The silver, as you saw, there was almost 21 grams. Now, working on around about a dollar a gram, and that's sort of a sterling silver price. This may indeed be a better grade silver. Uh, I heard it referred to as pure silver. Maybe it's 999 silver. Regardless, I'm just going to work on a dollar a gram. $21 worth of silver who knew and that wasn't what I was chasing I was thinking to be good copper out of this $33 our time the smash and grab was five minutes snipping the silver things did take a little while because they were sort of jammed I didn't want to leave any bits behind and the separating of the brass and copper out outside 10 minutes so 20 minutes for $33 that's near on $100 an hour now you could even not worry about the brass and copper separating. You could throw them all in brass. Um, you would certainly, well, you'd end up with basically about a kilo, 1,300 grams for um, both. So you would probably not be far below that and you would save 10 minutes. That's up to you. It depends how much you, how you like to um, spend your time. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Bit of copper bit of brass, some nice silver. Now, if I do the smaller ones, clearly there's going to be smaller return. It's probably going to be just as labor intensive, but it's still probably going to be worthwhile. I might just do these ones off camera and I'll just let you know before you finish up the video. Job's done there. They were actually much quicker. They broke up really easily. Uh, the ceramic material just fell out of the cups, so that was much quicker. Uh, and the cups were all brass, but the uh, tabs on the end were copper. And they were actually really easy to pull off too. I just used a pair of pliers on the cup. And then I levered the, the um, contact or the terminal thing off with the side cutters. And there was only one rivet and the solder let go very easily. So it was much quicker. It only took me seven minutes. The disappointing thing was most of the internal links were copper 
I did get two with silver, but obviously that affects our bottom line quite a bit. Let's have a look at the notepad for those. Uh, only a dollar four worth of brass, 74 cents worth of copper, 80 cents for the silver, but it only took seven minutes. So we're still working on around about $22 an hour as far as a comparison goes, and they were the smaller ones. So I didn't do these ones. I think we would be pushing it. I don't think I'm going to worry about these ones. I might just put them all in the tub in the shop for $5 a lot and just move them on. But the big ones I'm going to do, the medium-sized ones I'm going to do, hopefully we find some more silver. The silver content may depend on the age of them. Perhaps these days none of them are silver like that. It's obviously more expensive to have a silver fusible link than what it is to have a copper one. I think the copper ones just have little silver joiners that you know that um, fuse and it all depends on the melting temperature of the metal uh, which is dictated of course by how many amps travel through it. So anyway I reckon as far as a uh, conclusion goes for this video if you happen to find some old HRC fuses, anything that size or bigger, I reckon it's worth doing. Especially if they're older ones, you might get quite a bit of silver out of it. So uh, that's pretty cool. All the little ones, though, I'll just box up for five bucks a lot. So I probably should finish this off, shouldn't I, and give you a total just before we wind things up. Oh, incidentally, I did do the ones that was had the, um, the contact terminal screwed on the end. That's a good, solid, chunky piece of copper. There's no sleeve in that. It's all copper. And that does also have silver filaments. So I'll be taking those off. Uh, I'd like a whole box of those. I reckon they would pay really well. I have now tidied all of the fuses up. I've got this tub of little ones to sell through the shop. Uh, I've processed and weighed all the other ones. And I've swept up my mess. Although I'm going to find fragments of this ceramic stuff around my shed for many years to come. Let's go to the notepad uh, and I'll show you the pile of silver in a minute. These are the totals from what I've finished up just then, plus what we did earlier. $13.50 of brass, almost identical amount of copper, value of copper, $46 worth of silver. And that's working on a dollar a gram, and that's assuming it's, it's sort of sterling, 92.5%. It's more likely to be more pure silver than that. So let's be you know, conservative and just say $46, $72 worth of scrap metal in that little timber box, uh, plus $5 if we get that for these, so 70, 77 nearly $78, and if we want to include that electric motor from earlier, we could say there's essentially, well, it was $100 worth of scrap on those two shelves, but as I said, I'm keeping the motor, I'll sell these, we've got a pile of scrap brass, copper, and silver. Let's have a look at the silver. And here it is on my uh, jeweler scales. Quite a lot of really nice silver. It's not um, black or tarnished as you normally see silver. Uh, because oh, that bit's starting to tarnish. Because remember, it's been in an airtight fuse. Those, oops, we've got some strobing going on. Those fuses are sealed to be airtight. This silver will actually start to get a black silver oxide um, coating on it if it's left in the open. I'll just put it in a jar, save it up for a rainy day, add it to my uh, scrap silver collection to be cashed in one day when the price of silver is really good. So thanks for watching another episode of the Emergency Storage Shed Cleanout Series. We've managed to finish that big steel cabinet. We'll start in the middle next week and some random box of something. Who knows what we're going to find. I didn't expect to get 50 odd dollars worth of silver out of this today. I didn't expect to actually get it all processed, but I didn't want to have to put it away and deal with it later. Uh, one of the best ways to continue your cleanup mantra is to deal with things. Don't just put it aside. I'll get to that later. Deal with it. So <laughs> I'm dealing with it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.